Working with the design team, there was a, this group of people that normally wouldn't be in the same room together. We came from very different backgrounds. It took a little bit of time to learn how to, to work together and understand each other's point of view. But once we did, we found that we could go much further together than any of us would have been able to go on our own. And we, all, we were all learning. I mean, one of the things that made it so exciting is that we were all learning at the same time that we were de developing something that was for kids to learn with. So it was a learning space. It was like, it was like learning was in the air. Everybody is so um, enthusiastic about the content that we're dealing with and figuring out how to integrate that content into a game package or a multimedia package to make it really accessible and beautiful and fun for the target audience. Um, but at the same time, never losing track of, for example, the mathematics or the educational theory that underpins how we're presenting this material. Kids learn how to plot points in, in fifth or sixth grade, and they learn how to find an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, and, and they practice it. And most kids can do this if they're shown how to do it. They can mimic the process, but they don't see the need and the usefulness of it, and they quickly forget and get mixed up which is x, which is y. Um, there's a lot of, of problems that happen. It doesn't stick very well. And what they're not realizing is that being able to locate a point in terms of its coordinates is like extremely useful and related to all kinds of other great mathematics. So we put it in a game where the kids have to do it for a reason, where the need for it is apparent. It's not really even a need, it's just what you need, it's just what you do, it's a tool. When they have a goal in mind, and these are the tools they need to get to that goal, then they learn it. And it doesn't even seem hard. It doesn't even seem hard to learn the steps of a procedure when you're trying to get somewhere with that procedure. That totally transforms the whole idea of what it means to learn, to teach, and to learn, and to study, and to practice. For one thing, it's got to be easy for the kids to get into. So um, we, ideally, you ju the kid just sits down, turns it on, and they get pulled right into the game. But then it's also got to have, it's got to be able to go somewhere it can't just hit one concept or hit one level and stop. It's got to be able to build higher and higher and higher and really add to a student's knowledge no matter where they come into it. If they're at a place where they play level one for an hour, great. If they're at a place where they quickly breeze through five levels and then they hit something challenging at level six, that's great too. We look for the kids, can the kids play this for a long time? Are they engaged? I mean, when the kids don't want to stop playing, that's a good thing. Um, when kids are having conversations about the game with each other that involve math terms, that's a good thing. That's, that's like the big win in my view, is when, when they start talking about those math ideas and terms and what they did in the game in, with each other or outside of the game. Um, and, and we've seen that in, in a number of our games. When a teacher logs on to Glass Lab Game Services and assigns their students a game, not only do they have access to information about how long the student has played, they also can see which learning outcomes the student has achieved. Sometimes that might mean um, they just need to give some positive feedback to a student who's really uh, learning well, but other times it might mean that a student um, is struggling with a certain concept and the teacher then knows that they can intervene and provide support with learning that concept. So it gives a lot of power to the teacher to really advance student learning.